as long as we keep our pinkies up. Anything's classy as long as your pinkies up. Whether it's 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 murder with pitchfork and overalls, if that pinkies up, it's classy. <laughs> We're here today to continue the Friday the Thirteenth uh, saga of movie reviews with the the sequel Friday the Thirteenth Part Two Explosions. We'll talk about that diehard uh, text crawl that came up because I was not expecting that. <laughs> when you look back at the entire series, it still doesn't give you the full blown like Friday the Thirteenth feel. It's still a fun Friday the Thirteenth sequel. Again, it's it's not one of my favorites. I, it, I I love Jason movies, and this is probably one of the more enjoyable ones because it is the beginning of Jason Voorhees. It does feel like he's earning his stripes, and I don't know how soon afterward this film came out after the first one. It came out next year, the next year. So it was like really so that horror, soon, which like most horror movies, like we've seen with Conjuring, we've seen with Scream, we've seen with oh lord, Paranormal Activity, uh, Final Destination, Saw. It's like Saw is the movie only takes two million dollars to go. Green light, green light, green light, green light, green light. Sometimes as soon as the film gets a trailer they're like oh green light get the movie out <laughs> it's no different when it comes to these 80s horror films no different at all i assumed it was also much further away because that opening sequence it is the longest flashback dream sequence if it came out a year afterward and it's like unless you got hit by a train and you just didn't recall at all what happened the first time it was nice to see Betsy Palmer again. I was like, oh yeah, I got a little refresher. I kind of miss these commanding moments from Betsy Palmer when she was, you know, taking stage and just, you know, eating scenery as she was giving these lines. Jason being this silent killer, it had its own force to it. Like it, it did have this sense of fear as him, this big hulking guy who hit a hell of a growth spurt from this little pruny boy in the lake to this seven foot, you know, overall man. Him being the silent killer was like, yeah, I kind of miss the, the menacing, you know, lady in the sweater. If you really didn't watch the first one, considering we have that long, long intro bit, you can just watch part two and you're just chugging along. It's like you literally could jump into any one of the Friday the 13th movies and you're not going to be in this position. You're like, whoa, who are the characters? How, <laughs> what's the story? What? What castle is he from? No, it's it's they literally do that in almost every film. What makes it really fun and unique is obviously, again, the tropes of the the warning capsules, like the the, the final girl. Most sequels are like, hey, we need to go bigger, we need to go scarier, we need to go more gore, more more horror. This really didn't pump up numbers. It really doesn't do a good job at it, 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 it making it more exciting. And I think a lot of that comes from like, hey, Tom Savini was supposed to retire, but he had other movies he was gonna do. This one here uses uh, Carl Fullerton, which he does a couple really cool scenes in this, and he does go on to do really nice things, Silence of the Lambs, and he does work with a lot of like hot, top-notch Hollywood movies with Denzel Washington. So it's like, he does some really cool stuff. This film in general though, doesn't really capture the, the gore and the scariness of some of the later films or even the predecessors. I agree with the escalation of, of kills or I guess the, the quality of kills. It wasn't maybe as as big of an improvement as I would have hoped, but I did think the pacing was faster. I think of a horror movie is considered slow, unless it's like, again, a very particular fancy pinkies up, A24 uh, horror movie where it's like slow is kind of the point. But in this one, I thought that it was kind of breezing by the deaths too quickly and I don't know even though I have it on DVD I don't know if it was like a TV version that I might have seen but there were these very erupt cut to black things where it's like wait is this like a commercial break like I would I was expecting a Kia commercial yeah. just start rolling on by this, this is the credo here at our show bad but consistent so it was <laughs> it was a thing where where I was like all right whatever that, that that's just what that's just what we're doing, I guess. This one here did have a lot of cutaways, and it, I think it had to do with budget and just, uh, I, again, you didn't have the same special effects. You know, I think the most unique death in the film was the was the guy in the wheelchair. It's like, he doesn't even get to have sex because the, the girl is like, 
sitting there getting ready, walking to her car, going back. And he's just sitting there wandering around in his wheelchair. And all of a sudden, like, he has one of the most memorable deaths where he, like, stabs him in the face and he just rolled down the stairs. Like, that's, like, one of the funnest scenes in the film. And it's like, it, it's like, you really don't see anything. It's like, hey, why did you kill him? He already had enough going on in his life. What the fuck? Um, I want to go back to the beginning of it where we have... Our, our continuation with our last final girl. Jason has this moment where he has the cat do a distraction. So a cat is teamed up with Jason. Distracts her, jump scare from Jason um, as she sees the mom head in the fridge, ice pick to the face, and then the most bizarre thing, even out of that, the boiling kettle, he takes the time to take it off the stove. Well, that was A24 all the way. That was 100% like A24. Safety first. We're gonna just, we're just gonna grab this and then move it with this big knuckle and let go. How did you feel about your connection to this final girl in part two? She was fun, like she's a cool character. And I mean, you know, it, it, it's like it's talking about the bar scene. I, I found it uh, just as a quick little sidebar. I found it so frustrating that we like have this expectation of a higher kill count. We have a higher expectation of like, hey, the last film, there's 10 people that got, you know, axed by the murderer. And then this one here, you have like 20 people around the campfire. It's like, how do we save uh, time on these 20 people? I'll tell you what, we take half of those people and we send them all to a bar in town and then they stay in town until we decide to have our main characters come back down. I mean, obviously towards the end, I mean, we get to see her thinking on her feet, you know, using using uh, the good will the way God intended, and that's to prevent an ax murderer. Um, I liked it. I thought it was really cool. It really evened out for her as a final girl, as far as my scale of like badass, but kind of like, if you die, you kind of had it coming. I can't, I can't judge her too hard because to say that I wouldn't piss my pants, but I thought it like really weird. Like they really had a close up of her just leaking piss out of underneath the bed. But then she recovers with a chainsaw and the ending conclusion where she kind of mentally gains uh, an advantage over Jason. It, it, it's a really impressive uh, way to to fight your your big bad as far as like psychologically. This is baby's first steps into murder. Like he's starting out. He's he's never done this before. I'm sure he has done this before based off. <laughs> yeah. But it's like we don't really know if it's a if it's a human. We don't know if it's a zombie. Like obviously as you get down the series, we still don't know what the fuck he is, but we just assume that it's undead dying monster creature thing and we just we just love him for that. That's, he's just our little scamp, you know. Um, but it's like Jason is using tactics in this. Like instead of it being a, I'm gonna go through this wall and just kill you. It's like he's standing on a chair and being all strategic. You know, he's he's setting snare traps. It's tactical, and we don't really get that down the road. We get more of like the cane, where it's just like you're running a marathon, and all of a sudden he's just there. Back to like the the world building. Uh, our, our MTV Cribs, Jason Shack, the, the bachelor <laughs> pad that is Jason's house. The sheriff was like, you're too close. Like go to the next county over. And I was like, okay, maybe it's like on the other side of the lake, maybe like Lake Tahoe, it's like a big lake. Maybe it's just like yeah. miles away. So close and kind of like in theory, but it looked like they just walked like 10 feet and there's just a, a, a random murder shack. I know, like they're running to the shack and they go through this little creek. And then they're like, they're like, they're leaving the shack and it's just like this little creek. It's like. Was that just right across that creek the whole time? Like, what the fuck? It's a big shack, too. Like, like if you were going to be, you know, roughing it in the woods, like, he's doing a pretty good. Like, he has, like, a two-bedroom, one bath. He's lucky. He got, must have, like, housing authority or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once we get the the final scare, you know, the end, or is it a question mark, we get our actual look at the Jason face. Um, what I have seen and this is probably from much later on, is a more zombified version. Like you were saying, we, we get more of the turn into the, the living dead, paranormal kind of thing. But here it's more hills have eyes. Did you, did you like this kind of hillbilly Hulk Hogan uh, version of, of, of our Jason? Again, probably not my favorite, to be honest with you. Like, I the, I, I love Hills Have Eyes. I, I love Madman. I love I love Jason. Obviously, like, I'm into, like, freaks and stuff like that, so it's hella cool. I mean, we're friends, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've seen my... <laughs> <laughs> you hang out with me, you know. <laughs> um, but it's... It, it's some of the... Like, some of the Jasons that we see later on, it's hard not to 
just not enjoy this one as much. Like I love the Jasons down the road, and I, I like I'll always be more of that zombified, like living dead zombie style Jason. I think those are the cooler Jasons, in my opinion. As far as the sequel goes, and to give as far as the ratings, there, there seemed to be a a fuller movie in another edit somewhere. Um, so. What I did get, though, again, was perfectly fine. Uh, the continuation of of the lore or, or local yokels, some new, some old, some gone, RIP. I, I'm still, you know, excited to see exactly how we get to space. <laughs> you know, the, the, honestly, this, this is a very inspirational story. We have, you know, a local farm kid goes to the moon. So I'm <laughs> I'm that's the that's the story that I'm trying to take away from this. So as we go on this journey, again, I'm, st I'm still on board. I'm gonna say, I don't have a graphic for, for halves, but 3.5, three star, I guess. We wanna round it up or round it down. It's not my favorite Jason movie, but it is it is a good Jason movie. And again, it's like anytime I start a marathon, I start with it. So, I mean, does it really hurt? Like, I'll be honest with you, I've probably seen it more than most. Cause you know, whenever you start a marathon, it's very difficult sometimes to get past seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, you know, God knows. So usually this is a one that always makes it on the list to just always watch it. So it's it's a very easy, enjoyable slasher film. If you haven't watched any of the Friday the 13th movies, great one to start with. If you never watched a slasher film, a really good slasher film to start with, really couldn't go wrong. If you're into like hillbilly style, like pitchfork murders, right up your alley. Enjoy it. You have, you came up with the best sign off. And I mean, I don't know if you remember it, but uh, yeah, you, you, got, you got to send us off. It's blood, guts, it's spit, and ass. Uh, you know where it's at. Uh, <laughs> Here we roll. Close enough.